G'day and welcome to Ben's Works. On this week's episode, I'm going to take this breadboard that I made a few years ago and we're going to test out a cheap CNC machine. So I've been wanting a mini CNC for a while now and I found this one on Banggood. It's a 3018 mini CNC. It retails for about $400 Australian and it comes with the optional 2500 milliwatt laser module. Now when it arrives it doesn't look like this. It comes in about a thousand pieces and you've got to build it yourself. It was quite time consuming but there's plenty of videos on YouTube that explain how to do it. One problem I did find after putting it together was these stepper motors were wired incorrectly. There's one on the side here, one down the bottom and one up on the spindle. And what was happening was as I was sending the spindle down it was going up and when it was going up it was going down. So it was all wired backwards. So this is one of the connectors for the stepper motor and what I had to do was swap all the colours around. So I had to swap the red and the black over and the blue and the green over. So this is now the correct wiring. So that's how the colours should look in the stepper motor. Now I had to change that on all three of them. They give you a couple of carving bits in the kit. They're just like the V style ones. They're not the greatest so I probably wouldn't recommend doing too much work with them. I found a set of these flat top bits on eBay. This is the 1mm to 3mm range. The machine comes with this collar to hold your bit. Now unfortunately the shaft on the motor doesn't have a flat spot so you've got to keep an eye on these grub screws so they don't come loose. So the carving bit I bought have quite a long shaft and this is as far as I can get it up because it just bottoms out on the motor shaft. The machine comes with four hold down clamps. It's got a little T-bar on the end here and these slide into these T-slots. Unfortunately they can't hold down the thickest material so if you're going to do something quite thick, it's probably best to double sided tape it down. One thing I'll mention, before tightening up all your nuts and bolts, just make sure that the bearings slide freely on the shaft, and that way you're not out of square and there's no binding up. So if you scroll down on Banggood's webpage, there's a spot where you can click here, and that's to get some control software and some instructions. This is the software that they recommend in the download, but to be honest, it's not very good, I probably don't recommend it. If you really want to get into carving, I recommend downloading Easel, it's definitely a far better program to use. Once your machine's all together and you've installed the device driver, you can go ahead and do a test. Now in Easel you can click the carve button at the top here and just make sure that all the stepper motors are working correctly. So once you know that everything's working fine, we can put a project into Easel and do a carve. For this test I'm just going to carve my name in the bottom corner. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on how to use easel, there's plenty of videos out there. I'll leave a link in the description. Now all that's left to do is set the home position. To set the height of the cutter, just grab yourself a piece of paper and just keep bringing it down until it just rubs. Now all that's left is to turn the spindle on and start carving. Well there we have our finished carving, that actually turned out quite nice. That whole process took half an hour from start to finish. For those of you who are interested, I'll go ahead and lay some resin inlay in here, but I'll do that off camera and I'll post the results on my Instagram page. So now the next thing I'm going to do is turn this upside down, I'm going to stick it back down, I'm going to stick in the laser module and I'm going to laser engrave my logo. Swapping it over is super easy, just unplug the power for your motor, undo this allen key on the side here, pop your motor out. Now there's four little notches in the plastic housing here, just make sure you line that up. Push it all the way down, 
tighten up the allen key plug the power in now there's one more important step when swapping from the router to the laser engraver and that's this jumper pin on the back here you need to pull the jumper from the left and put it to the right so that last clip you just saw was from about a week ago and as you can probably tell by my voice I've been a bit sick but I'm feeling better now so let's get on with the laser engraving. So to use your laser engraver, I just downloaded this program called Lightburn. It's pretty simple to use. You can just open an image, any JPEG image, and just drag it into your workspace. I've just opened up my Ben's Works logo. And then if you click on it, you can grab these corners and just adjust it to whatever size you want. So now you've got your size worked out, you can drag this around your workpiece. Now if I put it down in this bottom corner and go click this frame button, It'll actually show me where it's going to engrave. Now because I want my engraving done in the middle, I'm just going to grab this picture here, move it across and up slightly, and that'll put it in the middle of the workpiece. Now that you've got your position worked out, the next step is to adjust your laser beam. Now you want to get this point as sharp as possible, and you can adjust that by turning this focal knob underneath. Now it might be a bit hard to see on camera, you can see there that it's clearly out of focus. Once I turn the dial, I can get it to become nice and sharp. And if you look through these laser safety glasses, you can see it's a fine point. Now all that's left is to click start. So far the machine's been running for about 14 minutes. You can see there we're at the 14 minute mark and we've done 20%. So still a fair bit to go, it's definitely going to be over an hour to laser this. So I'll turn the camera off now and we'll check back in later. So we're now 54 minutes in. And only at 55%. So this thing is taking forever. This is going to be two hours by the time we're finished. Well, that definitely took longer than I expected. That was about two hours to do that burn. Well guys, there you have it, the mini CNC machine. You can see there on the front, it carved my name out quite nice. I haven't even run any sandpaper over that. And it's got nice clean edges. And on the back, we've laser engraved my logo. It did take quite a long time, but I did use a high resolution image just to make sure it looked nice and crisp. And you can see there that it has turned out quite well. So I guess to answer the question, is a cheap CNC worth it? If you spend some money and upgraded your bits and spend some time on the software, that's where most of my time got taken, trying to find software that works with the machine. And I found, like I said, Easel works good to carve and Lightburn works good for the laser engraver. If you use those two programs, it seems to work all right. There wasn't too many dramas putting it together, I did about 85% myself before I went to YouTube to try and find a tutorial on it. It's pretty self-explanatory. As long as you get all your rods nice and parallel before you connect everything up, you should be fine. So in conclusion, if you're after a cheap CNC machine, this one's not too bad. Once you find the software that works with it, you can see here that it engraves and carves quite well. Well, that's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do have any questions about the machine or the software, Leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and have a great day.